Good afternoon. Welcome to you 200 plus attendees representing DPLA's network and a special welcome to those of you who are joining us today simply because you'd like to learn more about contributing to Wikimedia. Um, I hope that your colleagues and loved ones are healthy and remain strong in spirit. This webinar will provide an introduction to our Wikimedia project offering guidance on how partners can begin contributing data to Wikimedia Commons through the DPLA, DPLA network and next steps for interested organizations. Our speakers this afternoon will be our DPLA data fellow, Dominic Bird McDevitt and Sandra Falconier, LAM Wiki specialist from the Wikimedia Foundation. The Digital Public Library of America is a national platform providing free access to digitized collections from 4,000 libraries, archives, historical societies, and museums. DPLA amplifies the value of libraries and cultural organizations as America's most trusted sources of shared knowledge. In 2020, our national network is prioritizing projects with impact and work that asks what's going on out in the world and what libraries and our unique resources can do about it. These projects are all about harvesting our shared capacity by identifying common problems operating in the digital space. And one of those problems that all digital collections have is usage. How do we get users to visit our sites, interact with our materials, and provide insight back to us on how they use these primary sources in their teaching, scholarship, and creative projects? As a network, DPLA partners have deep dived into our analytics to understand how Google indexes URLs and how the quality of our metadata impacts search engine discoverability. Recognizing that search is not the only strategy available to us, we've also assessed how we do outreach and together workshop how to introduce new users to our collections. This Wikimedia project is a means for us to tackle our shared problem on both ends. Contributing collections to Wikimedia makes collections more discoverable through citing of Wikipedia articles and therefore exposes them to a huge audience of users. This project also requires we undertake a major cleanup of our metadata to prepare assets for upload to Wikimedia, such as adopting open access, implementing standardized rights statements and creative common license, and also including direct links to digital media and ingested records. The Wikimedia Project is a set of activities where DPLA is trying to lead, grow, and stretch the field while having an impact as the first large harvester of digital collections to partner with Wikimedia in this way. This work is supported by the Alfred P. Lone Foundation, the nonprofit that or operates Wikimedia, and other free knowledge projects. And now I'd like to introduce our speakers. Dominic Bird McDevitt is DPLA's data fellow. Dominic is working to integrate DPLA's collections into Wikimedia projects and make them more readily accessible and reusable online. Most recently, Dominic worked at the National Archives and Records Administration, where he was a digital content specialist, helping to design the catalog's crowdsourcing features and launch the agency's first catalog API, as well as being the world's longest serving Wikipedian in residence. Dominic also served as Wikipedian in residence at the Smithsonian Institution. Dominic currently serves as a cultural partnerships advisor at the Wikimedia District of Columbia and has been an active Wikipedia editor since 2004. He has a BA from Reed College and has studied library science at Simmons College. Sandra Falconier is the GLAM Wiki specialist at the Wikimedia Foundation. She previously served as program officer GLAM and Structured Data in the Community Programs team at the Wikimedia Foundation, working primarily for Structured Data on Wikimedia Commons and also for the Open GLAM and WMSE GLAM Hub projects. She started contributing to English Wikimedia, Wikipedia in 2003. After hiatus, she became an active Commons editor, was a board member and volunteer for Wikimedia Netherlands, and has contributed to Wikidata for years. Sandra was a Wikipedian in residence in 2014 and in spring and spring through autumn 2017. Sandra is a Belgian citizen and lives and works in the Netherlands. She has a Master of Arts in Art History from Ghent University and has worked on various internet and video projects in the Dutch cultural sector. 
We ask that you ask your question in the Q&A box in the toolbar at the bottom of the Zoom window. We will monitor the chat throughout the webinar and invite attendees to ask questions so we can hear you at the end. Dominic and Sandra are also fine with you all asking questions throughout the presentation and may use the raise your hand uh, button in Zoom to do so. And now our presenters. Thanks, um, Shane, um, and thanks everyone for being here. Um, so I, um, I asked Sandra just to kind of start us off um, by sort of setting the stage um, and giving us a broader review of some of the concepts. Um, and I'm hoping to begin by just kind of demystifying um, what we mean by Wikimedia or what we're um, talking about. So. Um, I'm going to um, ask Sandra to take it away. Thanks, Dominic. And after my <laughs> short introduction, Dominic will actually dive into the actual work he's been doing uh, at DPLA. So uh, I'm just uh, setting the stage here. Um, just starting, there's usually a lot of confusion among people who are not familiar with this distinction, which is most people, what is the difference between Wikimedia and Wikipedia? Um, everyone knows Wikipedia very well. It is the free encyclopedia that anyone can edit, which has been around since, since 2001. Uh, but what less people know is that uh, behind Wikipedia, there's actually an entire ecosystem and community of projects and people. Uh, it's actually a volunteer-based initiative uh, with worldwide focus. And um, especially when I, you know, give this introduction to glam audiences, to audiences of cultural institutions, I always emphasize that it's not just about Wikipedia, but uh, the Wikimedia ecosystem of projects actually has a lot more to offer. We have a, a media database, which is called Wikimedia Commons. Dominic is going to tell us a lot about that. We have a, a linked open data store, Wikidata, and we have many other projects for transcription, for travel, you know, travel reports, etc. Um, and our communities of volunteers are active on many of these projects. Next slide, please. What all these projects share, and actually the Wikimedia movement as a whole shares with each other, is uh, there is actually one mission or vision statement that, that everyone stands behind, which is the following. Imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. So the Wikimedia movement at large, the worldwide Wikimedia movement, is actually quite, it's, as I said, a non-profit. It's a, a volunteer-driven platform. Uh, it's a set of, of websites, in fact. And it's a community of people who tog together have decided that they ha actually have a pretty you know, lofty goal, which is to help humanity share the sum of all knowledge, which is actually a mission that's, or a vision that is quite you know, in line with what uh, cultural institutions are doing. So I will come back to that later in the, in the webinar about the connection between what the Wikimedia ecosystem is doing and the cultural fields. But uh, I think there's a lot of parallels in what we are doing and a lot of ground for collaboration. Um, next slide, please. One very important value behind the Wikimedia projects and, and shared by the Wikimedia community is we share free knowledge. Um, free knowledge means that uh, Wikipedia and all the other platforms that you saw in the previous slides um, all only contain information, assets, data that can be freely shared by anyone for any purpose, also commercially. So uh, basically what this graph represents is um, many of you will probably be familiar with Creative Commons licenses. Uh, the Wikimedia platforms, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, etc. Uh, only actually contain and show content that is reusable by anyone with, under very free conditions. So even content that can be reused commercially, I will, I will emphasize that again. Um, so that means that as a cultural institution, if you have content in your collections that is still copyrighted, uh, there it will be probably more difficult to actually share your assets or your digital files to Wikimedia projects, but still there, there will be options to share the knowledge that you hold as an institution. So there are always options to find, but it's important to keep in mind that uh, whatever is being shared will be freely reusable by the world. Next slide, please. And yeah, as I already said, uh, the Wikimo Wikimedia movement is in fact a volunteer movement. 
um, if I should compare it to another, you know, nonprofit in the world that that is kind of kind of different in, in what they do, but similar in its structure, I would, for, for instance, say the Red Cross. You know, it's we are worldwide organization or set of organizations that are really run by volunteers. If you see platforms like Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, Wikidata, etc., uh, most of the content there is actually written, contributed by volunteers, by a community of volunteers. We also have some staff like me who support these, but we are only a very small part of the community. So most of what you see on the Wiki projects is actually done by volunteers. Next slide, please. And just to emphasize the global nature of our projects, uh, in the introduction, uh, Charlie already said, I'm Belgian myself, uh, living in the Netherlands, and I actually contribute a lot to Dutch Wikipedia. So we are a very international movement. Uh, we are projects, you know, Wikipedia is available in more than 300 languages. Uh, a lot of our content is available in a lot of languages. And we also have organizations around the world that support the work of the volunteer community. Um, and what this slide shows, this slide shows a world map with our, what we call chapters, uh, formal organizations that support volunteers, often country-based, and user groups. We also have lots, I think hundreds at this moment already, user groups that can be either thematical or uh, yeah, can be geographically bound, that also have as a goal to support and work with volunteers, organize events, organize outreach activities, collaborate with cultural institutions. So, you know, this, this movement is actually active around the world. Um, I work myself for the Wikimedia Foundation, and that's maybe a segue to the next slide. Uh, the Wikimedia Foundation is um, what you could say, the um, kind of uh, an or the organization that is located in San Francisco, uh, physically based in, in San Francisco, but we are a very remote uh, friendly organization. Um, but our task is mainly in uh, worldwide, you know, um, reviewing the trends of what is going on, looking for what the, the Wikimedia movement needs as a whole around the world. We are also active in software development, especially uh, Wikipedia, for instance, the Wikipedia app, which you can download for your mobile, is developed at the Wikimedia Foundation. The servers of the wikis are also hosted by the Wikimedia Foundation and taken care of them. But then uh, software development also happens, for instance, in, in Germany. So it's actually a worldwide endeavor. Um, and the Wikimedia Foundation is definitely not specially placed in that. And as you can see, um, the U United States has many different user groups and chapters. Um, and most of them are regionally based or city based um, and the number of user groups is growing. So one of the things I would definitely recommend to you is check out whether you have a local user group. But on top of that, uh, actually a good reason why we as the Wikimedia Foundation actively collaborate with DPLA and I check in with Dominic a lot and you know, I help Dominic in his work and talk with, with Michael a lot is because we are super happy that an organization at the scale of DPLA is now available in the United States to provide support also on the Wikimedia fronts. So that's actually the reason why we as the Wikimedia Foundation are partnering in this project and providing mentorship and advice um, because, yeah, we are actually super happy that, you know, you get now this very strong point of contact and, um, yeah, Dominic is, go is going to be there, uh, is already there for you to be your point of contact for uh, getting your collections on our platforms, if that's, if that's of interest to you. Um, that's it for my short introduction. I will come back later with a bit more context about um, how we collaborate with cultural institutions in our movement at large. But uh, I will give the majority of time to actually Dominic to tell you what he's been doing so far. Great. Thanks so much, Sandra. Um, I like how some of those pictures are basically a, a Where's Waldo since one or both of us, I think, are in all of them, all those seas of people. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to um, start off uh, kind of in the spirit of all of the Zoom um, show and tell preschool. Um, classes that I've been doing recently of starting with just showing um, what we're talking about. Um, so um, I'm going to just give a practical example um, of what's essentially an end goal, um, the end product of this project that we're working on. So here's a Wikipedia article. Um, this is the, the article about um, this historical women's college um, in 
North Carolina and Virginia. Um, this is what the, the article on Wikipedia looked like <clears throat> um, a few weeks ago. Um, and then this is what it looks like now. Um, so um, the images that you're seeing now that um, illustrate the article um, came from the PLA. They came from our work. Um, these are actually images that, that come from the collections of um, the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, um, in the North Carolina Digital Heritage Center hubs um, collections. So um, this is um, just kind of a very um, um, discrete uh, example of um, what we would like to see happen uh, across Wikipedia at scale um, with all of the um, collections from the PLA contributing institutions. Um, so the potential is that um, images from, collect, from DPLA collections that are compatible with um, Wikimedia um, will eventually go into articles and be viewed there by the general public. Um, so that's the goal. Um, and the, what, what we're talking about here is first building um, a pipeline from Wikimedia um, that ends with that, um, that state of images into um, uh, Wikipedia articles. Uh, and really what we're doing is taking the metadata that DPLA aggregates um, and combining it with the digital assets um, and uh, taking it through to Wikimedia Commons, which Sandra talked about, um, which is the file repository. Um, and that's kind of the, the, um, the first step of the pipeline. And then the next step is also getting images that we've essentially uploaded um, from contributing institutions um, into Wikipedia. So I made this graphic to kind of, and of course this, this graphic doesn't, um, is kind of starting at the level of DPLA has already aggregated everything. So the, the step before that is, um, you know, the data that comes from contributing institutions and um, either directly from content hubs or through service hubs into DPLA's aggregated metadata. Um, and um, this is hopefully a, a way to visualize what we're talking about um, in terms of going, um, taking the, the data that DPLA has and bringing it into um, Wikipedia in the end. Uh, in terms of like how this, what this will actually look like, um, there's, uh, this is an example um, of what these, the files from the article that I just showed you, what it actually looks like in, within Wikimedia Commons. Um, so what, um, what we do is in order to, to place an image in Wikipedia, um, we first have to take that image and upload it to um, Wikimedia Commons. So this is taking sort of like working backwards. This is the step before getting into Wikipedia. Um, so this, this image is, um, you know, one page, page 103 out of this um, document that um, came from the UNC Chapel Hill collections. Um, we've uploaded the entire um, text uh, and in order to get it into the Wikipedia article, um, you know, we found this useful image within a page, cropped out actually the, the um, graphic part of the page, and that's what we put in the, the Wikipedia article. Um, in, within Wikimedia Commons, every upload that we're doing uh, actually includes um, the, the DPLA metadata um, underneath the image itself. So this is what that, that, um, uh, that upload looks like uh, in Wikimedia Commons. Um, it includes uh, essentially all the um, major uh, common fields that DPLA um, ingests. So creator, title, date, um, and um, also the link back to the source record in addition to the DPLA um, catalog record. Um, 
you might notice that it's, this isn't um, including everything. So um, as of now, the uploads don't have something, some data like um, subjects or formats. Um, and the reason for that is that the, the metadata portion of this is um, something that, that we see as um, uh, iterable process. And um, we're gonna continue uh, working on updating and um, adding um, better data as we go along. Um, but right now um, we've kind of added the um, sort of what's like the minimum necessary for um, upload and um, in the future we'll be able to make things more um, more of like a linked data approach with the subjects as well. Um, so this is this is kind of like the um, the the very hopefully um, uh, quick summary of, of what, what it is we're talking about. Um, we're taking data from DPLA, the, um, the sort of um, items in DPLA that are um, compatible with Wikimedia Commons. Um, and then um, from that, um, grabbing the digital assets um, associated with a given item, um, uploading those together to Wikimedia Commons. And then that's what um, allows, enables those images to be embedded into Wikipedia articles. Um, an important point um, to make as we're talking about all this though, um, is underpinning um, this uh, work is actually um, some of DPLA's important um, uh, metadata efforts. Um, and part of that is, you know, what Sandra talked about earlier that Wikimedia Commons only allows um, you know, uh, free and openly licensed materials or public domain materials. Um, and so in order for our project of uploading these materials to Wikimedia Commons to be possible, um, we require uh, essentially a, a machine readable way to filter on the rights of the materials. Um, so that, that's what allows us to be able to ensure that the things that we are uploading to Wikimedia Commons um, are actually compatible. Um, so this is an example of um, an item. This is a real item from the Digital Library of Tennessee. It's actually the State Library of Tennessee. Um, and uh, this is kind of, I uh, grabbed some of the, the um, original metadata uh, that came in from the Digital Library of Tennessee to show sort of an ideal case of um, the type of record that we could take and upload to Wikimedia Commons. Um, not just because of its, uh, that its rights are compatible, but because it's using a standardized right statement from rightstatements.org. Um, and um, so because of that, we can search on the no copyright in the United States right statement. Um, and that allows us to be able to confidently upload these materials um, and uh, assert that it's in the public domain um, in the uploads that we're doing. Um, this, uh, so this, so this is an example. I know um, that not all institutions have um, uh, implemented right statements, and so this is um, an example of essentially a, uh, uh, or actually the Wikimedia project is an example of sort of a, a real world um, practical um, you know, thing that you can do once you've implemented right statements. It's a um, hopefully an ideal use case for why something like that is worth the effort because now DPLA is able to do this um, proactive sharing for you of data. Uh, and so it's not just um, working on standardized right statements for philosophical reasons. Um, the second part, um, and these are kind of the two main data related prerequisites is um, that in order to upload um, the actual digital assets, uh, we require um, you know, access to that media. And um, this is something that actually DPLA um, hasn't done, worked with much before. So most 
um, you know, most contributors are providing um, an image that goes in the preview field that's essentially um, is or, or can be a thumbnail um, and doesn't necessarily represent the full, um, the full work and the full resolution work. Um, so some of these items that we have been um, working with uploading so far, you know, can be like 500 page books with, um, you know, um, each page is a different media file. Um, and so the, um, the way that we are able to um, upload those is we need to actually have access to what is the list of media files for a given item. Um, the uh, easiest and simple, simplest way to do that is to take that from a IIIF manifest um, because that, that's what a IIIF manifest is, the list of, of associated media files. So this is an example where the Digital Library of Tennessee is one of the few um, uh, hubs that's actually providing um, IIIF manifest links in their contributed metadata already. Um, and the tech team at uh, DPLA has uh, done some work on the data model so that um, we're going to be able to um, actually ingest these uh, IIIF manifest URLs um, that hubs can contribute and store that as one of the DPLA um, data fields. Um, and that, that will allow us to um, you know, filter on the media with the correct rights um, and then also um, upload the ones where we can access the media. <clears throat> um, and I also want to make sure to point out that IIIF is not a, um, a blocker for the project. Um, so it, any contributor that's not in, not, um, it doesn't have media um, available through IIIF can um, still uh, contribute the, essentially just contribute the, um, all of the media URLs um, in a, uh, a list, a multi-value field for um, the, a given item. And um, a DPLA can take that and put it in, in, in a different field that we've developed that's called the master field. Um, so that work has, is being done um, especially to enable us to upload to Wikimedia um, because uh, it's really kind of the first project where DPLA is actually trying to um, uh, get gain access to um, media in this way. Um, and then uh, with that, I'm going to um, turn it over to Sandra again to talk some more about um, kind of the um, motivations behind this. Yeah, a bit of zooming out. But first, I want to just do an administrative uh, announcement. I see one very good question in the Q&A box and actually one question that has already been answered by Michael. Um, this question by Gretchen, I, I would actually suggest that we take it at the end because it's a really interesting question, I think, which fits as a final question. But uh, we do keep track of questions, so please don't be shy and post them. Um, and now I will return to the presentation. Just for a bit of context, um, the work that Dominic is doing uh, with your collections now on the, on the DPLA platform, moving collections also to Wikimedia, to Wikimedia platforms, it's part of a longer, I would al almost already say a tradition. Um, in the Wikimedia movement, we have the Glam Wiki community, which is kind of a sub-community of the larger international community, which um, actually internationally actively engages with uh, cultural institutions like yours. Um, and in some cases, it indeed happens at the scale that is going on now here uh, with DPLA. Uh, there has been a similar project at Europeana some years ago with a Wikipedia residence there. Uh, but it also happens on small scale in, uh, in countries individually with individual institutions. Um, next slides, please. Or just one slide. Um, yeah, just re-emphasizing what I said. We, so this is definitely not the first time this is happening. Um, actually, Glambiki activities have started around 2005, the mid-2000s, the mid um, around the world. Um, and, you know, it's a very uh, common thing that is being done by Wikimedia communities. Uh, I'm 
at the Wikimedia Foundation, we have just run an, a worldwide analysis of the kind of projects that have been going on, analyzing, uh, analyzing them like, you know, how frequently certain projects have, have been going on in certain countries, etc. And the graph that you see here in the slide is one of these in which we are actually investigating what kind of trends we see in which platforms are being used. But we also see, you know, uh, how frequently collaborations happen with libraries, with archives, museums, etc. Um, next slide, please. Uh, one very important component of uh, GlamWiki collaborations is, um, so one part of the work that Dominic has been doing very, very actively already is actually publishing collections on our platforms on Wikimedia Commons. But what usually makes uh, GlamWiki projects su successful at large is uh, the combination of indeed publishing materials, but also with proactively running activities around them. So often working with the Wikimedia communities, with ClamWiki volunteers uh, to run activities that can be edit-a-thons, editing gatherings, campaign-like projects where you, know, you work around a shared topic and you, you have a, a few weeks of activity around the topic uh, with your institution. Uh, you work with your own you know, uh, public also to engage them on, on, in Wikimedia activities. Uh, so that act activity part is quite important. And I just want to em emphasize that to give the floor to Dominic again to uh, tell you a bit more about the things he plans uh, to work on in the upcoming months. Um, thanks. Uh, so yeah, so I wanted to begin by just kind of showing exactly what, we, um, what we're what we talking about. Um, but then I wanted to also transition now to talk about the work we've done so far and where we're going from here and how you can get involved and all those kinds of um, issues. So um, to date, starting in February, um, DPLA has actually uploaded over 500,000 um, files to Wikimedia Commons. Um, we did this um, primarily using materials taken from um, the North Carolina uh, hub of DPLA, um, which we've been using as a, a pilot and they gave us permission to uh, upload all of the compatible materials from their hub. And so um, the, uh, and, oh, I should point out the 500,000 is the number of media files. The number of items that that represents is smaller. Um, but just that, that amount of um, material being uploaded in the last um, uh, a few months is actually the largest, uh, the largest bulk upload to Wikimedia Commons from any uh, cultural institution uh, that, that I'm aware of or have been able to find. <laughs> um, so I think there's, so there's a lot of potential there for you know, taking this uh, large scale work that DPLA does um, with aggregation and uh, using that to kind of solve this, this big problem for the field of anybody that wants to contribute their collections to um, Wikipedia uh, previously needed to um, you know, reinvent the wheel and figure out how to actually do um, upload of their collections. Um, we're seeing that now as essentially, um, you know, a, a member benefit and something that DPLA can offer for um, for anyone, you know, to in, in the future to be able to take advantage of that. Um, so from what we've done with North Carolina already, um, I feel like we've been able to see that we can, um, you know, handle some uh, large volume of uh, files. Um, but I want to also emphasize that um, what we've done and what I'm talking about here is really just the, the technical solution, the technical part of the problem, um, which is the, you know, the, the pipeline um, and moving data from an assets from one place to another. Um, and this project is hopefully so much more than that. Um, so the, the, the reason that we're doing this is uh, is all about the uh, impact, um, the usage that um, Shane was talking about in the beginning. So I wanted to give uh, one concrete example and, and show some statistics of what we saw at the National Archives when I was there. Um, and just to point out, images of, of uh, cultural heritage artifacts um, already see billions of views on Wikipedia annually. Um, 
the National Archives, when I was there, uh, itself alone received over a billion views a year to its records um, in Wikipedia. And to put that in some perspective, if you took all of the digital, uh, or all of the uh, page views on Wikipedia, page views on other third party platforms, on the National Archives website, um, and combined them, um, and I know that's not apples to apples, <laughs> but just um, in a very, very like simplistic sense, um, the National Archives total uh, digital access um, was over 75% of that was coming from Wikipedia. Um, and, and you can see here the reason, um, if you look at some of the, this, uh, this graph showing uh, some analytics, um, if you look at the bottom right table there, um, you can start to see some of the, the um, top viewed images um, and the Wikipedia articles that they're coming from. And um, you can see that there are individual articles in Wikipedia that can see um, more than a million views you know, in, a, in a month. This is uh, data from March 2020. Um, and so this is the kind of thing that we're hoping to see um, you know, uh, the sort of impact that we'd like to see across all of the PLA's contributing institutions. Um, not everybody has materials that are gonna go in the Queen Elizabeth article, um, but um, we would assume that all of the materials um, that could go into an, a given article in Wikipedia, those, the, the usage that you'll see there will, um, always compare really favorably towards what um, we see in DP.LA and um, what is seen at the source institutions site. Um, so that's kind of um, what I wanted to point out. And um, what's, uh, what, what we're planning to do is because this is all about um, you know, usage, the um, uh, getting, data back and analytics back to the partners is an important part of this project. So um, the uh, eventual goal, um, and we've had some discussions about this um, already, how to do this is to um, uh, build the Wikipedia um, analytics of page view statistics um, in addition to things like the number of uploads or the portion of a um, partner's uh, um, items that are compatible with Wikimedia. So those, that sort of data, build that into the existing anal um, analytics dashboard that DPLA already provides to um, partners. Um, so that's not there yet because we're um, you know, still early enough that there isn't really a lot of data to show. Um, but that's kind of how we're um, thinking about this as uh, a way of meeting that um, need of, of usage for the contributors. The, the thing that, that um, is, uh, is really important about all this is that uh, the actual usage that we're talking about, that, that impact comes from the public um, consuming the uh, digital assets in Wikipedia articles that they find. Um, so this is something where the, um, the work that we've done so far of putting um, digital assets from contributors into um, uh, Wikimedia Commons is really solving that, um, that technical problem of how to um, upload uh, data and assets at scale um, and providing that uh, tool for uh, contributors. Um, but the, in some ways that's just the beginning and not the end of the project um, because there's, there's also this um, uh, basically editorial um, process that needs to happen next of getting those images into the, um, you know, the appropriate Wikipedia articles, um, putting them in proper context and um, you know, essentially making them um, be visible to um, you know all of the the people reading Wikipedia, and not just um, being uh, a file in a category in Wikimedia Commons. 
So um, the, the, what we would like to, I think, communicate here also is that the success to this, pro this project um, really depends on um, all, of, all of you and everyone um, out in the actual um, institutions contributing assets, um, getting involved as much as possible. Um, and the, the more that contributors um, and the staff and institutions um, are involved in helping this process, then th that just is going to um, you know, maximize that um, uh, impact. And um, in order to uh, facilitate that, this uh, technical work that we're doing is not the, uh, the end of the project. We're, um, that's kind of like one component. And the other component of the project is really doing the, um, the outreach and training to uh, allow the DPLA, the, the network, the community of DPLA to um, do that kind of editorial work. So um, this you know, webinar to knit, today, we don't have a lot of time to get into the nitty gritty of how to edit a Wikipedia article, um, but that's where we would like to take things next is for those who um, you know, are interested in, in getting involved, um, we're gonna have uh, future uh, training opportunities coming up. Um, in addition though, um, I think we really just wanna hear from you all and um, anyone, whether um, associated, you know, with a, a hub um, uh, representing an individual institution, uh, just a person, an individual person interested, um, you know, we, we want to hear from you because I'm also, um, you know, we're uh, looking for um, early adopters and partners in this project and will definitely work. Um, directly with any institutions that are um, interested in, in getting involved. Um, so don't just wait to hear about trainings if you're interested. Um, and I wanted to also, uh, you know, because we started off in talking about how this is a, a grant project um, with, uh, you know, the assistance of the Sloan Foundation, I wanted to point out that um, the, the pipeline that I've been talking about that we're building um, we're building it in such a way that this is intended to be um, an ongoing project and um, uh, just a, a, a service that DPLA offers now to members. So it's not something that's going away at the end of the year. Um, and uh, hopefully that that's not a concern that anyone has. Um, so just to um, kind of wrap up and talk about um, some uh, next steps or how people can get involved. Um, I, uh, I have a few suggestions here uh, based uh, especially on like kind of where, um, where people, how people's um, individual context is. And from the hubs, we're really asking um, to uh, do the work that will allow um, any contributing institution um, you know, within their region to uh, provide the kind of data that's necessary to participate. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of um, variation among all of the hubs of adoption of uh, standardized right statements. Um, and, then, and, and then what the work that, what I showed you with the um, contribution of IIIF manifests or um, uh, media lists of media URLs. That's all um, new. So we're um, going to start asking hubs to help um, uh, contribute that data so we can harvest it and bring it into DPLA. Um, for any individual institutions, um, if you haven't adopted right statements um, or um, that's something that, that would essentially be a prerequisite and um, uh, there's resources for that. Um, and uh, basically, if, uh, if you are an institution that's interested in this project in getting um, digital assets into Wikipedia, um, we would love to hear from you. So we're planning to do uh, a follow-up after this um, uh, webinar um, and sending out like a 
Google form where anyone can express interest. Um, and I would also say for any individual, regardless of uh, what your institution is, if you have collections that are all, you know, under copyright, um, or if you're just in, uh, interested as um, uh, a staff or, or as an individual that's uh, regardless of like what institution you're staff of, or if that institution um, isn't interested in the project, um, we um, were also um, open to hearing from um, anyone who gets and wants to get involved because um, you know we're uploading a lot of um, uh, images uh, from DPLA collections that you know anyone can work with uh, just as uh, as a Wikipedia editor and you don't need to be limited to your own institution if you're uh, if you have that um, interest and I think editing Wikipedia is a um, is really like a job skill for all of us anyway. Um, so um, with that, I think we're gonna um, start to open it to questions. It seems like maybe we already had some coming in. Um, did you wanna chime in, Shane, with any questions we've had already? Yeah, yeah. maybe. Oh, go uh, ahead. Chandra, did you want to start with the first question from Gretchen? Yes, I've been looking at it for <laughs> a bit already. Uh, thank you, Gretchen. I will just read it out loud uh, because I'm not entirely sure if everyone has the Q&A panel in front of them. Um, so, so Gretchen asks, where can we find statistics about Wikipedia pages and topics that have the most content? I've heard that military related content has the most content in Wikipedia. I work for a natural history museum and I'm interested in showing where science and natural history topics within Wikipedia are on the spectrum and the need for more contributors from my institution. Um, that's a great question. Um, so the question is basically, where can I find, uh, how can I find out how well covered a topic is that is related to my institution and how can I find those articles that need contribution? Um, we don't really have slick uh, tools or dashboards to show that too, unfortunately. Uh, since we are a non-profit in, in organization or worldwide organization, we actually focus on our platforms themselves and we have less, less tools to show the context behind them. Uh, there is some ongoing research on you know, how you can figure out topic clusters on Wikipedia, etc. Um, I would personally approach this issue by probably working uh, a combination with manual work, actually just doing some research yourself around topics that are relevant for your institution. And a tool that can be helpful is actually Wikidata, which is the linked data store behind Wikipedia, which you can ask various questions, you can query it for, you know, certain topics. And it also holds information about the quality level of Wikipedia articles. So uh, Wikipedia editors on English Wikipedia assign certain levels of quality uh, assessments to articles and that is actually something I think you can retrieve from Wikidata. So there is some tooling that you can use. It's not directly, I mean, user-friendly for any beginner user, but I'm sure that if there are questions on the topic, uh, Dominic will be able to guide you in the right direction. Um, to be fair, I also work on specific topic areas. Uh, so besides my work for the Wikimedia Foundation, I currently also work for Wikimedia Netherlands and I work for a project on the Dutch Caribbean. And all the data collection that I do on relevant topics is really, as I just said, it's a combination of handwork and uh, analyzing through some, yeah, some tools. So um, if there's more need for explanation on that, uh, I'm sure note can be taken of that and uh, we can provide some guidance on that. Yeah, I would just also point out, um, it's a good question because I feel like this um, issue is part of why, what I was just saying that, um, you know, Wikipedia literacy, I think is a really important um, just tool for our profession. Um, so this is something that we could um, in future webinars or in trainings uh, get into because there's a lot of uh, tips and tricks, I think that people that are experienced in Wikipedia could show, um, you know, someone with a question like, like if, like, if you go to a Wikipedia article, just, just as an example, and click on the tab that says talk at the top of the page, which most readers have never done, then you, you'll find 
a lot of information about the article that you might have never realized was always there. And what Sandra was saying, the, the article um, quality assessments um, is a great example um, of something that uh, every, every article, um, if it's been assessed, will have that assessment um, in the, the talk page of an article. Um, so there's a lot of things like how, do you, how to get to the page view uh, statistics for any article. You can actually do that with like two clicks from looking at the article itself. Um, there's a lot of stuff like that where, um, you know, beyond the scope of just this project of getting images and articles, uh, definitely I would recommend that we kind of um, start to think about Wikipedia as a platform and how we can, um, you know, learn more about how it works too. Um, do we have another question? I can read the second one. Uh, let me see. Sure. I think next questions are more uh, targeted towards uh, the kind of work you do at the EPLA, so probably better for you to answer them, Dominic. Okay. Um, one is quite practical. Uh, what do you do when contributors have complex objects? For instance, more than one image per manifest, like with a sweep, a suite of prints or photographic album. Yeah, so um, I would say probably the majority of the items we have uploaded already in that pilot project would fit in that category um, because it's uh, a lot of things, um, you know, uh, I'm seeing a lot of like institutional you know, university records where it's an old uh, course catalog or yearbook that's um, a hundred page item and they're each individual page scans. So the way, the way it looks, um, is when, when we've been doing the uploads, even though it's an, a, a single item, that's the reason that we actually require something like the IIIF manifest, because um, if you look only at the, the um, data that currently DPLA collects, uh, you can get back to the, uh, the source institution catalog record, and you can see what the, the uh, provided um, preview image is. Um, but previously we didn't have a way to know um, if that preview image is uh, the full work, if it's, you know, uh, an image of the cover of a book and there's actually 500 other media files within that item. Um, so the, by definition, if you have a triple IF manifest, it should represent the item um, as a whole, the, the, the manifest for a triple IF is, is what um, provides uh, all media that's associated with a given item. Um, so what we did with North Carolina, because that work um, was before DPLA began, or had the ability to harvest um, triple IF manifests, was we were actually basically reverse engineering and taking the, uh, the ID part out of the URL from the catalog record and generating triple uh, IF manifest URLs from that. Um, and that's really the only, getting to the manifest somehow was like the only way we could really have been able to upload um, materials. So, so yeah, the, I think that um, hopefully that's answering our question that we're, we're not, we're trying to not ever make assumptions that what is in the DPLA's data right now is the work itself, but we're only able to upload things where we have confidence based on the fact that it is a triple IF manifest or in the future is utilizing the master field to be able to know that what we're uploading is the correct um, extent of the item. Then for a next question. Thank you, Dominic. I just want to say practically we still have seven open questions left and I also see that one person has uh, raised their hand. Uh, so, and we seem to have a bit less than 20 minutes left, just for time framing. Um, okay. uh, the next question is, is, are there any plans to accept 3D image files in the future? Uh, do you know, I, Sandra, I think that from what I've seen that Wikimedia doesn't yet 
have that or unless that's a new thing. I don't know if Wikimedia Commons takes that file type. Wikimedia Commons takes 3D images, but I am not super, super, super up to date which t file types exactly. Um, okay. Also, in terms of file types, we are very much going for the open source ones, so the ones that are not mm -hmm. patented anymore. So 3D is possible. Uh, it is, however, which is a bit sad for uh, cultural institutions, without textures. So it's only the, you know, the shape itself. Um, and we do have documentation on Wikimedia Commons, so we can get back to you what specific formats are accepted. Uh, so basically it's possible yeah. and volunteers are already doing it, uh, are taking stuff from uh, various 3D websites where free li freely licensed files are available. We have French institutions okay. that do it, so it, it, could, it would be possible without textures in certain formats. Okay, and so what I would say from the DPLA end of things is that there the only limitation I can imagine is just whatever file types Wikimedia Commons accepts because otherwise with our workflow there's no reason we can't take any uh, you know any media file that were provided and perform an upload so I guess that's yes if it's the right file uh, next question, I think, is also for you, Dominic. Um, okay. Is it are this are it only public domain images that will be used? So yeah, so to get more specifically into the the types of rights, there's um, uh, the what we've uploaded so far is only materials that we found with the no copyright in the United States um, standardized rights statement, which is essentially the the standardized rights statement for public domain. Um, for Wikimedia Commons though, there are other um, Creative Commons licenses that are also compatible. So um, you can uh, also use things like CC BY, CC BY SA, it's the Creative Commons attribution licenses, um, which are not, not that all that common in DPLA materials, um, but that's kind of the threshold of what's um, considered free. Um, and also if something's under a uh, CC0 Creative Commons um, license or Creative Commons public domain mark. Um, those are all considered um, openly licensed enough for Wikimedia Commons. Um, I think that I think that's everything. Um, so, but essentially, it's yes, things that are in the public domain, uh, unless there are works that are freely licensed. Um, for other reasons like some institutional policy maybe that if they are the rights holder and release things under a free creative commons license thanks dominic from me <laughs> um, next question is um will dpla consider to have items uploaded to wikimedia link back to original locations to original website i assume yes. also the website of the institution Yes, yes, so I'll do all that. That's, that's been baked in from the beginning. Um, so uh, when you look at any image that DPLA is uploaded to Wikimedia Commons, there's a little banner box um, that's included with all of them that uh, links back to the source um, record first um, and also the DPLA uh, item record as well. Thanks. Then next question is, did Dominic say, uh, just a general question, did Dominic say 1 billion page views on Wikipedia? 1 billion with a B? Yeah, and just to, yeah, so the way we, the way we count that, um, that was 1 billion for the National Archives alone. Um, the way we count that is by looking at um, the ar Wikipedia articles that use images um, that are uploaded from a given institution. So when you upload something to Wikimedia Commons, you can include a category. Um, so you'll see a category on things we upload that say something like images from, um, you know, the Univers University of North Carolina Chapel Hill. And so we can use that category to then um, look at uh, the, uh, the articles that use images from that uh, category. And then we uh, essentially add together all of the, um, all of the uh, page views for those articles. Um, so that's how we get to a billion in a year for the National Archives. Um, and definitely it's in the and many, many billions if you think about um, all of the 
uh, aggregate of cultural institutions combined. Next question is, um, is the goal of the project more about adding images to existing Wikipedia articles or about creating new articles to accompany your images or a mix of both? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I would say um, it's uh, both of those approaches are kind of in scope for the project, um, but the main focus is uh, getting the images, images into articles because um, you know, what we're working on right now is uh, a, a one-year grant project um, in, in trying to provide uh, the real like impact um, metrics that we can. And so there's a lot of other types of ways that we could engage with Wikipedia. Um, uh, and so we could do things like thinking about just the, like the sort of like reference work that library libraries do in in just thinking about content itself and not even worrying about the images um, and that's still i think useful and within scope of what you know libraries uh do but uh for this for the project um that we're thinking about i think that that's really the the primary activity is just getting the images into articles you know where, where they're appropriate for page views um, but if, if it's the case that anyone is interested in actually doing an approach where they're working with content and editing, um, I know I didn't even really talk that much about writing new articles, um, but um, you know, we are, I am definitely interested in providing um, training uh, for those kinds of activities too, if that's what people are interested in. I will read the last question that we will treat now, but as I understood it, and the moderators should confirm this, um, other questions have been recorded and will be answered asynchronously. Um, the last question I'm reading now is, um, I've just started adding assets to Wikipedia pages, but didn't know about doing it from DPLA, if I understand you correctly. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um. So I guess is the concern about like duplication. Um, we, we definitely have some, um, some, uh, some partner, some institutions that have already done their own uploads. Um, and uh, that's something that, um, you know, we're gonna be uh, working with uh, either uh, as part of the um, pipeline or just, um, generating kind of one-off um, lists of what's already been uploaded to make sure that we're not doing any duplication. Um, but I, I think like the way that we're thinking about it is that if this is something that you've already been doing, a lot of people have been doing uploads to Wikimedia in uh, kind of um, uh, more um, resource intensive way um, you know, either manually or using some um, clunky tools that exist. Um, so I'm hoping that we are kind of like, can be a tool in your toolbox. And as long as, you know, you work through your hub or whatever is necessary to provide the right types of metadata that, um, you know, you're basically compatible, then we take that, um, the, the kind of arcane, uh, mysterious uh, process of doing the actual uploads, especially in uh, bulk, sort of out of your hands and allow you to just do the, the work on uh, the sort of editorial work on Wikipedia and focus on that since that's, you know, where uh, every individual institution's expertise lies is in their own collections. Thank you all for your engaging questions. I'd like to um, thank you all for sticking around to uh, hear the answers to those. Um, Dominic and Sandra, we appreciate your insights and um, your uh, leading us to this introductory, uh, introductory you know, webinar on Wikimedia and the Wikipedia, Wikimedia community. Um, as Sandra said, we have captured the questions and we'll answer them after the fact. We, you, um, you 
all the attendees can look forward to DPLA sending um, an updated message with a survey asking about your interest in participation in participating uh, further in the project. Thank you all. This has been a great time to connect here this afternoon and uh, reach out to myself or Dominic with any questions you have about the project. Be well. Thanks so much. Thank you all. Thanks everyone.